Hey guys, Zarak here, and today I'm bringing you guys part 2 of the Inform 7 tutorial series that I'm going to be doing. Uh, if you missed the first part, don't worry, I'm going to have a playlist, I'll put it down in the description down below. You can catch any of these episodes. If you're watching this ahead of time, and I've already uploaded the rest of the series, so to speak, you can go on that and just keep playing episode after episode, so you guys can learn this beautiful program. N note sarcasm. Anyway... <laughs> Moving on, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at this documentation um, section on the right and then also just general how to play the actual game because at this point we've got the room, we've got an item but we haven't really got anything else. We haven't learned how to play the game. Uh, obviously half of games design itself is actually playing the game, uh, playing other people's games, learning what they've done making ideas, making adjustments to make your game unique but also find out what worked for other games and expand on that. Obviously you don't want to directly copy and plagiarize but finding your own technique and style while seeing what other people have done to make them successful is obviously something that you want to do. So we're going to start with this documentation tab on the right here. Now. As I said in the first episode, the documentation tab is your friend, especially when you're starting out. Uh, when you're getting further into the project, you probably won't use it very much. Uh, I very much only use uh, the recipe book section on the far right. Uh, but the writing with inform section is what you're going to be looking at first. Um, now, you don't want to do what I did. Um, when I first opened up inform, I decided to try and read every single piece. And it just did not sink in. Um, so what you want to do um, with these tutorials that I'm doing obviously a lot of it I'll already go through but if you get stuck or you want to see if you can find something for yourself or you want to go ahead of time um, these little tabs here are brilliant so for example if we go to uh, things here uh, you can see it's already got all the text that we've already done so it says about the room it says about the room description and the um, item so you could have is here instead of is in uh, whatever room it is um, and that way I think you don't have to do the uh, description as far as I'm aware um, so you can see it's got loads of different areas uh, the player is in uh, the room so room here is uh, cobble crawl the player is in cobble crawl so if you want to make loads of different rooms because the th let me start that again to make more sense if you don't have that piece of code there uh, it's, it's not necessary at all uh, but if we go into um, our text here, and let's say we make um, kitchen is a room, all right? Um, and let's just have the uh, description there as the boring kitchen. Now, when we start the game, we will always be in the bedroom. We won't be in the kitchen. Now, the reason for that is because Inform reads the code, all right? Like any code, it reads it from top to bottom, like a book. And it goes from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. So whatever the first room is, it will read. Now, it doesn't have to be at the top here. Um, I could have... All right, I think if I have these before it, it will clash. But when we get into different codes, you'll see that there is stuff that you can put above this, uh, above the room. And it will just automatically go, right, where's the first room? That's the room it starts in. So if we didn't want uh, the player to start in the bedroom, so let's just... If we hit go here, we'll see that we will start in a bedroom. Now, I haven't actually put where the kitchen is, which I'll get into in a minute. But if I want to have it start in the kitchen, we just put in um, after this, if I can forget my mouse, right? Um, the player, the platter, uh, the player is in kitchen. And now this, theoretically anyway, when we replay, it won't start us in the bedroom, it will start us in the kitchen. So that's the way to get around it if you don't want to organize your code in that way. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have that piece of code there, it is just going to start you in the bedroom because it's the first room in your description, uh, in your code. So documentation is really, really helpful. Uh, you can keep going from here. You've got uh, maps, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, we've got one-way connectors etc etc we've got loads of things and this just goes through absolutely everything so it goes through you know time uh, when play begins which we'll get into uh, probably maybe this episode as well uh, every turns that I use quite a bit 
uh, times of days, tell them the times, approximate times, etc. etc. So you just got loads of things uh, that you will need for your code. The recipe book is basically the more complex stuff. The stuff that you won't need to make your game, but the stuff that will improve your game. So for example, in The Beast Within, the game that I decided to make for my final major project um, for college, I wanted to have a book, um, and this book was going to be a diary book for the player, Yuri, and it was going to document some of the feelings and thoughts and stuff that was going through between the month he was infected as a werewolf and the month where he first turns, because during that month he starts slowly changing mentally and somewhat physically. So I needed a book. Now I watched a tutorial done by someone called Dan Cox, I think his YouTube was, and if I remember I'll put it in the description as well, because uh, that's where I first learned, but he did his uh, tutorial in like 2012, 2013, and quite a lot of his code was obsolete and also missing. Um, it worked for the basic, but when you wanted to expand on it, it just did not work. So I had to go to different sites, which I'll get into probably the third or fourth episode, because uh, that is key. Uh, where you know where to go and I had to use the recipe book now luckily for reading for example and I don't want to scare you but for reading it is all in the recipe book so if we go into um, number nine props food clothing money toys books and electronics and we go to 9.6 reading matter uh, it goes through things here, but it also has these stuff at the bottom examples now this is for absolutely anything if we go back to our uh, th uh, was it things here? You can see we've got examples at the bottom here as well. Big ver verbosity one, I think it's supposed to be, and slightly wrong. So you always have um, examples under most, if not everything. And this will give you examples of how you can use the code. Now, with books, right, I wanted to have one where you can read through, you've got a certain amount of pages, you type in, you know, what page number you want to read and it will display the text that of what I've already already um, automatically put. So I went on to pages. Now I don't know whether I went on this straight away or whether I was just going down each example. But if you go on pages, right, these are the codes, uh, these are the commands, sorry, that the player can type in. Alright, but that doesn't really matter. That is just that's done in the code. But as you can see there is a hell of a lot of code. Now I don't want to scare you, but there is a hell of a lot of code here. Alright, all of that is for code. Uh, actually, except from that last bit here. All right, but we'll get into that in a, another video. So all of this here is the code. Now, some of this first paragraph you can uh, get rid of because obviously this is an example using a sinister book that's in the library, and a library is a room. So you can change that around. For example, I already had the room. I just had to change the sinister book to be the diary book, etc., uh, etc. Et so the good thing about documentation is it's all there. Um, you've got to change some of it around, so like I said, I had to change, uh, instead of saying the Sinister book, it had to be the Diary book. Um, and I think also when you get to the table here, uh, when you copy and paste, it doesn't go automatically into that, but we'll go into tables probably in the fourth or fifth episode of this. So I want to make this really nice and detailed for you guys. So the documentation really, really helps you. Probably stay away from the recipe book, the bit I just show you guys. Uh, for now, because that is the more complex stuff, you know, reading, dice rolls, um, going places with vehicles, times, etc, etc. Just stick with this stuff, um, you know, your items, etc, etc, until you get more confident with the language and where you get to a point where you're like, right, I want a book, or I want to have it that there can be three different outcomes by a player's dice roll input. Uh, which is actually something I didn't get to at the point of The Beast Within, but that's something that I need to include going forward, because uh, I am still doing The Beast Within, uh, continuing on with it. But anyway, moving on. So, we've got the kitchen, and we've got the bedroom. Now, I said that we can't go to each room, alright? We can't go from the bedroom to the kitchen, and the kitchen to the bedroom. And the reason why is we haven't distinguished where they are. Now, I forget which... Uh, which thing it was, I think it was here, yeah it's here. So rooms and maps 3.2 in the right and within form section, you can see the airport road is west of the fishing pla uh, packing plant, fish packing, I, I can't read. Anyway, that code is key 
because what this code here is saying is that the airport road, which is a room, which they've already s distinguished, and fish packing plant is also a room, which they've already distinguished, like we have with the kitchen and the bedroom. And it's saying the airport road is west of fish packing plant. So if you're a fish packer plant and you type west into the command box, you will end up going to the airport road. Vice versa, if you're in the um, airport road and you type in east, you'll go to fish packing plant. Simple. So we need to do that here. And exactly like it is here, you have bedroom as a room, and then let's say bedroom is north of kitchen. Now this is a bloody weird house or it's a bungalow um, if this is true, but that's all the code you have. Now you don't need to put here that kitchen, um, kitchen is south of... Um, yeah, a kitchen is south of bedroom. You don't need to put that. You don't need to put the same thing twice. You just need it once. Now, we've got rid of the code which uh, says the, uh, that we start in the kitchen. So we should theoretically, unless I've done anything wrong, which I haven't, start back in the bedroom. And now, if we go south, we'll be in the kitchen. If we go back north. We're in the bedroom. If I try to go east and west, we can't go that way. Similar, if we go south and we try and go east and west, we can't or south. Yeah, we can't because there's no rooms there. Now, if I took that code out, just to show you that it does work that way, all right, if I just get rid of that, hit the replay button, it will just keep saying you cannot go that way. So you need that piece of code there, and I think I just, yeah, there we go. So that's simple. Now, this leads us on to the second part of the video, and it's going to be pretty quick because I don't want to keep the video stupidly long, and that's just navigating around the game. Uh, we're going to be doing the basics, obviously, first, so we haven't got too much in here. So, if we go replay again, so it, we can go to different places. If we have codes that are simple, commands that are simple. You've got south, you've got east, you've got west, and you've got north. Obviously, because we've only got the bedroom and the kitchen, we can only go north and south, respectively. Now, you can short those to east, west, south, and north, simply. Um, or you can obviously type them out. And a lot of them are similar in that way. So you've got inventory. Now we don't actually have anything. As you can see it says you're carrying nothing. You can also have it as inf. Or you can even have it as i. So take your pick. Um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, obviously sometimes you can code into different things. So be wary to that. Now if we go. Uh, we're in the bedroom right now. If we type in look. It will automatically reprint the room description. Now this is great if you've got something that like every turn it changes or something like that uh, for a bit like a mindfuck game. Uh, that's really good. Um, so you can see what you're doing. Or for example, um, in my game, you're in a room called Hellestrum and you're finding all the werewolves. And ask you, after you ask the question, who are you, their names will change in the room description. So at the moment, I've just named the werewolves or the animals in this, what they are. So Lupus, Goro, Ulfa, Zagrath, and then obviously the archer as a person. But... In the other thing, I might have had red werewolf, uh, brown, light brown werewolf, dark brown werewolf, no, dark brown werewolf, sorry, a white werewolf. Um, and then after you ask who, who are you, it then changes. So look is a quite nice command, but it's not something that you'll see every single time. Now, another thing you want is you want take. Uh, so we're going to take the pile of cloves, as it's the only proper item in here. Now, if we go back into inventory, you can see we're carrying a pile of cloves. We can also examine the part of clothes. And you can see you really should clean this up. Now, one thing that is a bit different and um, that I can change, obviously, as I've got it in my inventory now, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, you know, yeah, you should clean it up, but you've already got it with you. So you can change the descriptions, and we'll get into that in another episode because it's a bit more complex. Um, but it's something that you probably will need. And also, you can drop uh, part of clothes. Now, take, I believe you've also got a different command. I'm trying to think. I think, it, is it pick up? I'm not sure. Uh, is it pick up? Yeah, so you can do pick up or you can do take. Take is quicker. Um, as far as I'm aware, that is uh, really the basics that you need um, for now. I mean, you've got stuff like eating that you can do, which I don't even think I had in my game. Um, you can lock and unlock doors, which we'll get into... Uh, you can speak to people which we can get into etc etc but for now this is the basic so you got your four directions your inventory and how to take and pick up and drop items and examine them that's all you really need 
Now, if you're unsure of what commands you can do um, and what actions there are, because there is a lot built into Inform. Inform is very good at that it builds into stuff so you can you don't need to code absolutely everything. But then sometimes when you want to try and override it, it's a pain in the ass. We'll get into that in another video. But if you guys want to see what every single command, every single action you've got automatically in, or even when you build it in yourself, because uh, you can make your own actions, if you at least have something in your source code here, and then run the program like so, and then go to index, and then go to command, uh, you've got absolutely every single action in here. So we've got feed, we've got enter, we've got drop, drink, discard, which is the same as dropping, etc. etc. It will tell you whether you um, things are uh, the same. I mean, if you hit the um, like magnifying glass um, on some of them, um, there we go. So, for example, dropping, you can see you've got all the check rules and stuff, which we'll get into in a different th uh, thingy and a different video. Sorry, um, and then you've also got all the commands. So, put down, put, drop, throw, discard are all for dropping. So I think that's it for this video guys, um, I'm sorry that these are a bit long but I want to go into more detail. So I hope you guys did enjoy and learn a little bit more about how to use Inform and that maybe you can even try and go ahead with yourself, um, use some documentation tab and just experiment really. The beauty about code um, is that when you experiment you learn new things and you also find out different ways of doing things. There is 600 million different ways of using Inform to do things. So in the next episode I think I'm going to go over when play begins uh, which is a command for hence when play begins, um, chaptering and also variables. So we'll get over those three things, we're getting a little bit more complex now now that we've learnt the basics. So I hope you guys do enjoy, this is Mizark, peace out.